All right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you who are joining us. Welcome to the Evershed Sunderland Clean Energy Team's 2021 webinar series, which we're calling From Transition to Transformation. Evershed Sutherland is a global law firm. We have over 3,000 lawyers in 68 offices across 32 countries, across Africa, Asia, the Middle East, Europe, and the United States. Our clean energy team comprises over 150 lawyers covering all legal disciplines related to implementing clean energy strategies, including commercial, regulatory, and finance issues. I'm Dorothy Franzoni. I'm the chair of the Evershed Sutherland U.S. Clean Energy Team. I'm a transactional lawyer and I focus on renewable energy project development in the U.S. electric industry. We are especially grateful and honored to have with us today for our keynote speaker, Ailesh Patel from Baringa Partners. Baringa Partners is a management consulting firm that helps their clients run more effectively navigate industry shifts, and reach new markets using deep industry insights and innovative ideas. Baringa has been voted the leading management consulting firm in the Financial Times UK Leading Management Consultants 2020 in the categories of energy, utilities and the environment, and oil and gas. Ailesh Patel is Baringa Partners Global Strategy and Markets Lead for the energy and resources industry. He has over 25 years of global experience and has been at the forefront of the energy transition landscape advising the full spectrum of stakeholders from utilities to regulators and governments, as well as lenders and investors across the low carbon value chain. We are very appreciative to Eilesh today to have um, prepared for us a really interesting comprehensive overview of clean energy transition for 2021. So I'm going to turn it over to him to um, give us a brief keynote to start this discussion. Thank you, Dorothy, for that very warm welcome. It's an absolute pleasure to be here today uh, virtually with you all. Uh, and thank you to Evershed Sutherland for hosting uh, this event today. Um, Evershed Sutherland is a, is a hugely respected firm in the low carbon space, one that we uh, at Bringer Partners work with closely, hugely respect the work you do uh, and actually love working with you. So um, an absolute pleasure to be able to give this today uh, and to be invited to do so. Uh, um, our low carbon future is here now. Um, 2021 is the inflection point and um, one, look, one may need look no further than the green agenda being top of the priority for the new US, US administration. Um, the most significant climate change summit since Paris will be happening this year in October uh, in Glasgow. The growing political support for net zero carbon targets across uh, economies in Asia Pacific. Um, investors, banks embedding climate change into decision making that they're making both around lending and investment portfolios, the initiatives from the Bank of England and the UK, for example, Mark Carney's initiatives and thought pieces around this are really driving a fundamental shift in uh, both the financing and investment community. And then no least the turning point that we've seen this year um, around oil and gas majors and corporates. You know, 2020 year was the year of net zero pledges. Um, I think none of us could uh, turn off the news or look at the news for more than a day without seeing a new pledge around net zero. And so now is the time to begin that kind of strategic and operational focus for those companies. You know, 2021 will be the year with those fresh government commitments from the top emitting countries, the imminent approach of COP26 and a real private sector focus and company focus on embedding climate change into investment decisions, 2021 has to be the year of action. And yeah, that may sound optimistic, um, but it's also comes with a warning. You know, our generation will be the first to feel the full impacts of climate change and the last to be able to do anything about it. So 2021, in my view, must be the year when transition becomes transformation, where we need to deliver on those commitments, those net zero commitments and promises we have made, um, and build back greener in a difficult environment, which we know we're currently in with COVID as it continues. If I look at how we build back greener, um, I think the first thing I'd say in terms of 2021 is we must look at a low carbon future that goes beyond power renewables. Uh, and the really important piece of this is that 80% of our emissions comes from sectors outside the power sector. So the transport sector, buildings, end users, corporates will be critical 
to our low carbon future. And any participant in the energy value chain, whether you're a financier, an investor, a utility, an advisor, must be thinking about what's happening in the three major sectors outside of power that I've listed here. And for each sector, we need to be focusing on the decarbonizing choices ahead of us, whether that includes renewables, whether it includes hydrogen, thinking about carbon pricing, electric vehicles, low carbon heating, storage, clean energy certification, all of those are going to be critical facets of achieving our low carbon future and making the choices ahead of us. And some of those choices will be easier than others. You know, there are some very hard to decarbonize parts of the transport sector, as we know, air, for example, or aviation, for example, and some very hard to decarbonize facets and parts of the buildings and industry sectors. And so the choices here are not straightforward. What we do know is we'll, it, this will require trillions of dollar investments by our estimates, $11 trillion worth of investment to transform all four of these sectors over the next 15 to 20 years to get to that, put us on a pathway to the net zero world. All of that needs to be achieved in the context of um, a sustainable finance mechanism, which is viable, but also an economic development and sustainable finance um, ecosystem, which lives and breathes together so that we aren't making the trade-offs between economic development and sustainable finance, that they bring come together to enable us to make the changes that we need to do and embrace that low carbon future across all the energy vectors that we need to make those changes in. But the choices do need to be made and they need to be made today. You know, one of the important things that I always emphasize when thinking about decarbonization is the lead times for energy infrastructure, which you know, Mark, Dorothy and Michelle will talk about, no, no doubt in the panel, are very long. You know, so the decisions need to be made now and those will have an impact in 2030 and in 2040. Uh, and we can't afford to wait. So let me give a perspective on what those decisions are. What are those things? What are those trends in 2021 that we need to make decisions on or that are going to shape 2021 and therefore the next 10 years of our decarbonization and low carbon future journey? Well, first of all, financing structures uh, up on the top left of, of this slide here. You know, I think the innovation of financing structures, the influence of TCFD and risk and regulatory reporting drives. We all saw BlackRock's and Larry Fink's letters to both CEO and clients yesterday. You know, how important is that going to be in driving behavioral change amongst investors and lenders? Um, but equally, the innovation around financing structures that needs to happen around green bonds uh, and, fin and alternative financing structures that are going to allow the decarbonization of industry and not only the financing of renewables. I think we've done a really good job as an industry on financing of renewables, but where do we go from that so we can decarbonize transport, buildings and industry? I think there's something about clean energy certification as well. Um, what is that gold standard? I think that we need to search out for renewable energy certification offsets that are going to make the pricing and value of the renewable energy we produce in order to meet our net zero objectives really valuable and traceable. Something for me, thirdly, around the, the next generation of renewable energy, as I called it, you know, what is that model, that business model, which markets should we focus on, that are going to be the next wave for the next 10 years of where the renewable energy itself and in industry needs to focus. I think there's something around the oil and gas majors transformation. Are they really going to deliver this year's 2021 going to be the year when they commit from promise, which they've done last year, into action this year? And where does that investment happen? How will it happen? How quickly will it happen? Turn a little bit to technology, hydrogen. Um, you know, I've probably passed class for myself as a moderate skeptic on hydrogen, I have done, but is 2021 the year when hydrogen will come of age and become commercially scalable and be adopted en masse for certain use cases? One that's often missed is clean tech manufacturing. You know, there's a lot of attention given to battery storage and particularly some of the gigafactories turning up battery storage, but I put equal weight on electrolyzer factories or on large turbine factories, you know, the next generation of OEMs and clean tech manufacturing and international trade, I know something that Mark will touch on later, will be really, really important to driving that low carbon future. Building platforms, you know, investors don't like investing in two, me two megawatt projects when they've got billions of dollars to invest. So how, what, the, what will the future of renewable energy platforms look like in 2021? And I think it will be another year when they will be important across the world. And then finally, corporate decarbonization, you know, the major technology players and the likes of Amazon and the RE100 companies, you know, now 250 of them are signed up for that, have already set the pathway for corporate decarbonization. But will they really scale in 2021? I think that will define where we 
where 2021 takes us. Why don't we double click then into three of those areas? And, and I think um, I think there's three messages here as I as I double click on three of those eight areas. You know, firstly, global renewables will be the bedrock of a low carbon future. You know, let's let's not think renewables are over in our passion to go after storage and hydrogen. You know, 80% of our effort may well still need to be in renewables in 2021 and in the next 10 years. But a low carbon future um, cannot be achieved without decarbonizing industry. So as a second double click thematic. And then finally, decarbonizing industry, we can't achieve it because it's really hard without finding new technologies such as hydrogen, which can help that decarbonization. So I think for 2021, I, I'd say the focus needs to be on these three. And let's just spend a minute or two exploring each of those. So in global renewables, if you, um, I think the focus for 2021 needs to be on scale, route to market and project innovation to achieve improved returns to pro for projects and entering new markets and countries, especially if you have 2030 goals. And for those that have 2030 goals for capacity or capital to be deployed, you're already too late for greenfield development. M&A will, will have to be the answer for you because of the lead times of developing from greenfield new onshore wind and new offshore wind projects. It may still be possible for solar um, with shorter development times, but certainly for new opportunities, deliver capacity by 2030. You're too late if you're starting greenfield now for most mature technologies at scale. On the onshore wind side, I think two or three of the big issues to focus will be on high, high load factor renewables. You know, the types that we're building in the Nordics, in Europe, in Australia, several hundred megawatts in size in Texas, both on solar and wind. You know, those are the projects that I see investors really focusing on 21. Where can we find those really big super scaled projects that can allow us to deploy large scale capital? There'll be some really important priority markets for that, US and China and Europe will continue to be important, but within those, some sub markets could be really interesting. I think Poland as a, as a new hub, the North Sea in Europe, Australia particularly continues onshore wind and solar to be important. Southeast Asia will grow um, and India for certainly renewables as we saw with Total's deal with Adani is going to continue to be an important focus for international investors. An additional value creation will happen through um, business models such as bundle storage or optimizing your route to market which includes merchant uh, or even long-term PPAs through corporate PPAs for example. And on the offshore wind side, uh, which has been incubated in Europe and now going global, you know, the hubs will be largely similar to 2020, but I think, again, they will reach scale and there'll be further opportunities for new hubs to emerge. I mentioned Poland already. One of the areas I think that is going to be really interesting is how you scale floating wind, uh, which is to come, and grid optimization uh, for offshore wind. You know, the world of point-to-point -point grid connections, which can often be up to a third of the capex offshore wind, may well be diminishing as a value point, and there may well be value for developers to focus on coordinating grid connections to reduce the price of projects over the 2021 period as they look to design projects they're going to deliver over the next 10 years. If I turn briefly then next to decarbonizing industries, you know, I think the three or four most, most important industries we need to focus on um, and that way the front line of the energy transition are going to be oil and gas, particularly refineries, heavy industry and tech and data centers. If I pick three sectors to focus on this year, it's going to be those three. And in all cases, you know, uh, the renewable energy will play a really important role on the, on the energy purchasing strategy side. But in all three of them, we also need to look at um, the intrinsic nature of their operations. How are they, what are their energy requirements across heat, light, uh, power conversion technologies and what of new technologies on transition side like hydrogen uh, or CCS can play an important role now in helping to decarbonize their operations. And then to help them, uh, I briefly mentioned hydrogen there, I think hydrogen and, uh, and CCUS or carbon capture uh, and uh, underground storage can be critical to reach net zero, particularly in those hard to decarbonize sectors. There are going to be some really important barriers that remain to that, both in economics and non-economic barriers. Um, but I think there are some really attractive use cases um, that are worth investigating. And as investors on the call, I think you should be focusing this year on 
um, looking at and starting to diligence specific use cases which could be which could reach commercial viability in the next two to three years. And I think I would focus on um, three particular use cases, ammonia, refineries and petrochemicals, and in steel, where I believe depending on your view of carbon pricing and the impact of carbon pricing uh, on those operations in different countries, and work in a, in a scenario where carbon prices start to, and carbon price exposure starts to rise above the $50 a ton mark, the economics of hydrogen can look very attractive, particularly where you can produce low hydrogen using green hydrogen using low cost renewables. And I think there's four or five countries around the world and regions around the world where that could be interesting. Australia, I think some parts of the US, offshore wind in Europe, I think could be really interesting, and in some parts of China as well, where for transport, they will particularly focus on the downstream market, but the low cost renewables will really help them. So I think the recap for me is um, 2021 is the inflection year for us. And, and we need to act this year because the next 10 years will set us on a pathway to the next 40. And I would focus this year on the eight trends that I think will define that, and in particular on three areas that I think will be able to impact where investors focus and where we focus in industry. Renewables is a bedrock, decarbonizing industry and supporting the commercial scaling of new technology such as hydrogen to help both of those.